So finally, after weeks and weeks of anticipation, the incredible Jiggy Comedy has landed fresh from New York here to perform on Saturday night at the Cockpit Theatre in his first UK premiere of his show, 51st Dates, Zero Second Dates. We are really excited to talk to him. We're going to go inside. We've also got Tim and Mike along for a ride. They're going to be doing the podcast, which is happening tonight at the Star of Kings. So I don't want to wait anymore. We've got Jiggy to talk to. Let's go. After much hype and anticipation and weeks of planning and excitement, he's here. I made it to London. I want to make sure I project because Ricky said talking to the microphone. Yes, that's so cool. I made it. He made it. He's here. Got it's the, Jiggy 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 Comedy. How are you doing? You got the first, this is first I've edition. Got the first edition. No one's even, even seen this. Has no one seen it yet? In raw form. You don't I, even know how uh, lucky you are. I, I'm, so I am going to put this on in a bit, guys, but I'm not going to rock it for the whole interview because it'll just take over the show. Well, I think people should know how big you your want head it? is. Look, how, look, at, look at the tab she put it on. Can we just clarify that this it's is on that tab, tab because I've got French plaits, not because I have massive head. And I don't know what French plaits are. These, no, Jiggy. Thank so you. guys, if you are Let's coming to the show, about. this is uh, available, right? They are available. And how much uh, is it? Uh, <laughs> are we allowed to talk about that? No, yeah. They're, okay. I think, I don't know how much they are. Yeah. They're there, though. So they're I expect there. to see everybody wearing this on Saturday night, like the whole audience. Uh, <laughs> well, let me just start with saying it's, I mean, it's an honor to be here. Oh, that's nice. Do it again. And, well, first off, we have the show on Saturday. Really nice. It's is actually it quite sexy. Is it? Yeah, you're always. Where would I be from? So let's do it again. Say, I'm, I'm excited about the show on Saturday. I'm excited about the show on Saturday. Chelsea boy. Right, so what I want to talk about to start with, how did you get into comedy? Like, is this like a natural talent you felt you had from a young age? Like, did you have anyone that made you think, I've got to do that? Um, I was always kind of the class clown in the sense of, like, I always, you know, I like to make people laugh when I was in elementary school and middle school. and. I did uh, improv, and I would always do like skits and little movies and things, nice. and uh, so I, I liked to perform and I liked to make people laugh. I didn't, I never knew it was gonna end up in stand up. Uh, and then when I was in high school, I started to jot things down, but I was very nervous to get on stage. I bet. So I'm a performer and I've done comedy, but I couldn't do stand up. I'd be terrified. I'd be petrified. It must be really frightening to get up there, put yourself out there that first time. How was that for you? Well, the first time I went on stage was an accident. There was an open mic near my college, and I went with a few friends to go check it out. And uh, without knowing, they put my name on a list. And so the host called for me, and I, I was like Jiggy from day one. They put my name Jiggy on the thing, and um, they called me up. I had no idea what to talk about, but it was refreshing just to like do it. Yeah. And once I got the first one out of the way, I was like, I love this, and it became like an addiction. And, yeah. And once you get used to like hearing your voice come out of a microphone, out of the speakers, and, and you realize that you can do it, it becomes more about the creative process, which I've loved. In terms of what with the show that you've created over here, obviously when you first did it, you had Saturday's one, and then the podcast was added in a little bit later. A little so bit later, yeah. Is that something that you've been planning, or just like a, oh, let's do that over in the UK as well? No, I mean, to be honest with you, the whole show here in London was uh, an experiment. You know, I had no idea, like, uh, I had done a few podcasts here um, over the phone, and so I knew there were some people who, who might come out and support, and what yeah. I had put out there is, um, to a few folks, is like, you know, come up with a list of signatures who, of people who would come out to see me before I, like, go all the way over there. I don't want to perform no, of in front of myself. And, um, you know, we got 100 signatures, and that turned into a theater now that we have, like, sold out. And so when I saw that, I was like, I'd love to do something else and do something different. And the live podcast shows I've been doing in the States, and it's so much fun. It's a different format. It's very loose. Um, and I have two of my best friends in comedy and in life with me who are going to be doing so and it's going to it's completely different it's, yeah. uh, and it was something that I just wanted to add into the mix that I thought it could be fun for everyone including myself I, I love doing it um, I wanted to ask you as well so English women I'm going to just go on to this one what do you think of English girls I know you've not been over here very long I, I actually have a thing I have a thing for British women I don't do know what you? it is I mean I don't know the voice 
I think, yeah, I think the accent or something to that. But yeah, I don't know. We're going to talk about your relationship and how you got involved with the Impractical Jokers, sure. who are obviously incredibly hilarious. Like, I love them. I've watched them for a good couple of years now. My dad actually got me into it. My dad was like, you got to watch these guys. They're amazing. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I sat down and I was like, oh. And then it's like back-to-back -back episodes on the Comedy Channel consistently. Amazing. I love them. So tell me, how did that happen? Um... Yeah, I mean, first of all, they're amazing guys to begin with. They're, and I've been with traveling with them for um, for over three years wow. uh, as their opening act on their live tour, which a lot, you know, a lot of folks don't even know that they perform live. But I'm yeah. sure they do now. But yeah. um, you know, the, the television show came first, and then the live show came second, as yeah. far as like um, based off of the television show. Uh, and it's been amazing, and uh, their tour manager saw me perform in Florida where I was doing stand-up and thought that I'd be a decent fit, and uh, we just we hit it off right away. Like I think that um, I liked hanging out with them, they liked hanging out with me, the shows were going well, and that just rolled into more and more um, things. You know, I, I was on their um, television show, Joker's Wild, as, I had a guest appearance on that, and um, I performed with them, I don't know how many shows, but... 40, 50, 60, I can't, wow. I don't know how many shows. When, when you did your first, literally the first night you did it, how did that feel like? How many were in the audience? That was, uh, I was in my hometown of Boston where okay. I grew up, so my mom was in the crowd. It was very nerve-wracking. It was the biggest show I ever did at the time. It was like 2,000 people or something like that. I mean, I, I have met Murr personally. Mm -hmm. I haven't met the other guys, and he was just an absolute joy to be around and a pleasure. Um, they all seem like incredibly lovely people like they really are so nice. the cool thing is that they're not they're not playing a character on the, the show the show is uh is genuinely them and i think that's why it works i think the fans get to really know them and their personality through yeah. the television show and it really mirrors what they are in real life are they really excited that you've got this show over here yeah joe just tweeted me just tweeted out today so, and they're they're all very supportive when i told them they were like they were so pumped as well you have a huge fan base and i been chatting to some of them on Twitter and they're really supportive and they they're so excited like I've seen the tweets this morning people are on trains and buses and however they're getting down here and it, you're, they're like they will come for you Jimmy <laughs> you're so excited about that yeah it's gonna be great and uh, no I don't want to be sensible anymore I, you know not that this is sensible but I want to talk about something and all I can hear in my head are two words balls <laughs> Tell balls me off. about, I'm really sad, I'm sat here going, I really want to talk about boss sauce, let's talk about boss sauce, so talk to me. Is it called on the on the jar, is it called, to explain to people, ball sauce? Um, chocolate raspberry ball sauce is a real product, it's not called chocolate raspberry ball sauce, it's, uh, it's called, it's chocolate raspberry, I think they call it body spread. Or body See, butter. that's what it would be over here, body paint. Yeah, body yeah. paint. And it comes with like a little brush. That's right. Um, it's a real product. Now, when it was used on me, the girl who used it called it chocolate raspberry ball sauce, which was too funny not That's to. just amazing, but I kind of wanted it to actually be on the label that I could go I buy this. I've tried to private label it. Myself. Have you? You should do. Like, I think it would it would kill. It's a great product. I would love a jar that said that. In fact, I might just make my own. I might make one for you and you just should. put some sauce in it and not carry it around on a date like this girl did in a ham. Why did she have that already with her? I'm not sure. I actually saw her recently. <laughs> did you? Believe it or not, yeah. For, for with the ball sauce or? No, no. Okay. she was sauceless. <laughs> Come into the show on Saturday. Here's your snapback. Here's your t-shirt. Here's your ball sauce. I thought about it, but then I think the British Food and Drug Administration. <laughs> like, he's he's selling what? He's selling ball sauce. I don't know if we do. We have to regulate that. Okay, I want you to do a little link to camera for me in a lovely British accent. So I want you to say, I'm here in the UK. I haven't got any ball sauce, but I love it. In a really Chelsea voice. For me. Hello, I'd like to thank you for, for tuning in and I just want everyone to know that I'm here, I'm in, I'm in London and I don't have any ball sauce. So if you have any, I'd be at the Cockpit Theatre on Saturday and I'll have these caps, I'll trade you a cap for some sauce. 
You're big on Halloween, right? I love Halloween. Me too. It's my favorite thing in the world. I love it. I love being scared. I love haunted houses. Do you decorate your house? I live in an apartment. Okay, do you decorate your apartment? No. You should. I Why do you have everything. to throw me down? I just said how much I like it, and then you make me feel like I don't like it. Uh, why? Because I don't decorate. What, do you decorate your house? Do you have ghouls and goblins? Everything. Like, literally, it's Halloweened out from maybe, like, end of September. And I have Halloween candles that smell like Halloween. What does Halloween smell like? Patchouli and muskiness. They're amazing. Patchouli? Patchouli. I think you're just making it. Yankee up. Candle. Well, you'll know. It's an American brand. Yankee Candle do Halloween candles. I'm not making it up. They do candy corn. I know I know about candy corn. I wonder why my house is smelling like candy corn. But I've never tasted candy corn. Is it good? How would you want it to smell like candy corn if you've never tasted it? I've smelled it and it smells yummy, but they don't sell it over here. So is it, is it just like It really just tastes sweet? like sugar, yeah. It's just, it doesn't taste like corn. Can you send me some in the post? Sure. And some ball sauce. In the post. <laughs> in, in the post. Let me try and do your voice and tell me something saying your accent. I'm excited to go to your show on Saturday. I'm excited to go to your show on Saturday. <laughs> now, we're going to move on and talk about your podcast. We're going to get the guys in for that as well. So we're going to... We have a show in the UK called Loose Women. Mm. And all these great women sit around a table at lunchtime and they talk about topical issues. Topical issues. Are you going to give us the issues? Um, I'm going to give you a lot of issues if you keep them laughing sure. at me. Thank you everyone for tuning in today. Though we're all comedians, and we're here for a good laugh on Saturday. There's just nothing funny about canine lupus. <laughs> right, uh, after that wonderful introduction by Jiggy, uh, I'm going to take him and hold the reins again. I have now got all of these lovely guys with me. This is so lovely exciting. Chaps. Lovely chat. We all have British accents. We'd love to try. <laughs> Okay. All right, Mike, you um, start with a British accent. Let's start accent. with Mike. Should we just introduce? Yeah. Mike, Tim, sorry, obviously we know who this is. These are wonderful guys that are going to be doing the podcast with Jiggy tonight. And also opening for Jiggy on Saturday. So we're going to have a little chat to you guys about your podcast. But this British accent thing seems to be the topic of the day. So okay. let's, let's go crushing straight it. Right. to camera. Hello, viewers. Thank you so much for watching this podcast video. Why? <laughs> I said that incorrectly. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, Let's thank everyone for. Uh, you guys are just like, oh, now Mike, it's your turn. Poor Mike, <laughs> you just got thrown in there. Poor do Mike. Yeah, I don't know what I was doing. Do you want to have a moment, doing. Mike? Mike, do it again, but do it right. Okay. Stop fucking it up. Fucking These are nice. Yeah, he works out. They're he did really three nice. push-ups this morning. Oh, yeah. that's good for three. Up. <laughs> I love viewers. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Loose Gentleman television show. I'd like to personally thank everyone for tuning in today. Uh, and it's also such a pleasure to have such good friends with me. Um, Tim and Mike and someone else is here too. Let's have a cheeky Nando's. Let's have a cheeky Nando's. And you'd say in the US? Let's go to Nando's, bro. Let's go to Nando's, Nando's bro. Nando's. That wasn't bad. Yeah. yeah it's so at least good. Tim's backing me on this. All right, Tim, you have to do one on camera. What are you thinking, mate? She is fit. <laughs> Very fit. Should I add that to my vocal reel? Very fit. <laughs> what are you? <laughs> That's the only line he does. Is that it? <laughs> There's no other line. There. I heard, so in my first time I was here, I was like, all right, they weren't here yet. So I was like, I'll just go out and have a drink at a pub. And I overheard that snippet of conversation, and I was like, I love it. I so was like, that's, it and that's it. I've adopted it. I, I was like, man, that's the accent I want to do. She is. Did he say, did he not say bruv? There's a lot of that in London. I, yeah, it was probably yeah, bruv, actually. That's bruv. start saying bruv. What are you saying, bruv? What are you thinking? Like, what are oh, you man. saying, bruv? What are you saying? Bruv? But, like, where would he be from? Mm. It's kind of almost. Chelsea, but trying to be a little bit wide. So wide? we've got you're like a wide boy. So a wide boy, wide boy, wide boy. Uh, a wide boy is like Danny Dyer. So also, so like, can you do that sort of you know? He's thin, like that you skinny. smoked a lot of cigarettes in your oh, life. Hey. <laughs> that was nice. Like you have yeah, bro. I'll oh, tell bro. you what, you're doing my nutting, son. Do that. To say yeah. what is it? You're doing my nutting, son. Check out my boat. Doing my nutting son. No, wait, that was. Uh, okay, I'm getting mixed up. Do nut at the back of the throat like nap. 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 
Do you like Lily Allen? Like a robot. Lily Allen. I do. I love a bit of Lily Allen. Do you? Like you like Lily Allen? Mike Do you? It's like Michael Caine a little bit. What? I am like Michael Caine. That's a bit of Michael Caine. <laughs> like, I am Michael Caine. That's, yeah. I think Lily that's an Allen. insult of Michael Caine. So I met Jiggy after a uh, failed show. Oh. There was, we were supposed to do a show and then the show was canceled. And then so just, this is, I thought this is like the craziest meeting of my life, but I went to look for another venue to like just have my own show. I wanted okay. to just make my own show. No, this show will never get canceled. And I feel like Jiggy was on the, had the same mindset. So we ended up at the same bar, like local bar. Oh. And, uh, and uh, we've had a conversation for hours. So, and um, Tim, let's let you have a chat, darling. Sure. So far, we've just had your lovely one-liner, which, yeah, which no problem. I do like. So, yeah, tell me about your involvement. Uh, Mark and I went to college together, and freshman year, we ended up in the same friend group, and then stayed close all through. Uh, we lived together sophomore year, and I remember one day he came in and was like, you know what? I think I'm going to be a stand-up comedian. And there was a little coffee shop down the street that had open mics every Sunday. And I was like, didn't know how serious to take it because also at that time, there were a lot of dance parties in our room, uh, solo dance parties of just Mark. And he would say, you know what? <laughs> I really think I could be in a boy band. So <laughs> I, I still have that fantasy. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know how serious to take it. But after you said it, like every single Sunday until we graduated, you perform there. And it's been really cool to see him get to where he is now. I'm going to say goodbye. Thanks, guys. We hope you've enjoyed our little sort of quick put together social media interview with all of these guys. This is going to be doing the rounds for the next few days. These guys are going to be in London until Monday. There's a few tickets left for Saturday uh, here at the cockpit to see the show. Then you need to just do everything. And come then uh, there is, if you do come to that, you'll get the exclusive invite. To the Nando's the party. Nando's the meeting. The Nando's right. party. Who knows? So, but you can't come to Nando's if you can't come to the show. I think that's a fair deal. Yeah, that's it's a fair deal. Don't even think okay. about it. So, um, guys, thank you. I love Thanks you. Thanks for having us.